So I've noticed that like a lot of uh, lower intermediate players or post beginners like make a lot of chaotic moves on the chessboard and just create their own problems really. So I'm just looking at this game. It's a completely random game I've just picked out on Lee Chess. Uh, it's a 1300 rapid game and I'm going to show you what I mean. So the guy opens with the correct move, e4, right? Uh, Sicilian. And then this is complicated already. Both players, you know, there's a lot of tension in this position. And, you know, maybe clarifying something might be better. Like maybe clarifying one of these things, right? But but why? Plays a check, it's okay, it's fine. And then in this position, we have to think, we just have to exchange the bishops and then clarify the center. But let's turn the arrows off, it's annoying. But why does this? Right, which sort of overlooks this move. So black does right to take that pawn. But the position's like, it's too chaotic, really. I think I think rather than play this move, I mean, this position, clarify the position a little bit. So are you going to take? Are you going to push? Right, are you going to defend? But do do something about the issue. If you're going to check, that's okay. But then you need to check, you need to take this off. Right, so take this, take this piece off, for example. And then clarify this position. Right, but what white does instead, plays this move, which just creates like that extra level of complication that's not necessary. Takes, and now we're a, you know, an e-paw down. And then what to do with this knight? Plays the knight in, went pawn down. So take, after takes, takes, queen check, and then fortunately for white, or, or unless they saw it, the knight can come back and the piece is safe. And black then takes up this pawn and takes. And in this position, you know, the queen is holding onto the knight. We're down material. And, you know, it's black to move. Um, black plays this and just drops this pawn. So it's kind of like... What's white want to do next? Right, uh, so maybe developing and protecting this pawn makes sense. I don't understand this move because you're getting a tempo on the queen, but then you're then losing the, the, the pawn. Right, and now in this position, what does white want to do next? Take this pawn, potentially win the rook. Black, again, is kind of like rushing to get the temples on the queen a little bit this is just pattern so it's just pattern recognition right so so white takes in this position and then black plays a really interesting move actually it's a really nice move whether it's the correct move in the position i don't know but it's certainly an interesting one black plays bishop takes f2 which is interesting because now the king is in the sort of in the open air and black could have picked up this knight but instead throws the check in. I notice that a lot of amateur level players, if they see a check, they usually play the check, whether it's the right move or not sometimes. But that's okay, fine. You can still pick up the knight next move, which uh, black does. So in the position now, we're on this rook, but we're also threatening this check as well. All right, so white's got multiple options. This king is obviously exposed as well. And they were just... Too many complications, I think, in the position. Bishop can come to c5. So we takes, but we, we did have this move. Right, which would have won the queen. So I think in this position, it's it's natural to grab the rook. But I think, you know, just look for the other options as well. Uh, winning the queen is obviously better. So, so anyway, takes, and then knight check. King challenges the knight, and then we pick up the bishop with the knight. However, black missed a mating opportunity, and with queen takes, king takes, and then we have checkmate. Understandable, you're going to miss that. They're only playing 10-minute games, but definitely uh, recommended would be to go over, you know, the common mates in three, things like that. And even if you don't see these moves, you're in this position right, with an exposed king, right, and you think that you can push the pawns and there should be something in the position. But it's understandable that black didn't play that. Let's go back to the actual game.
And I like well, I like I like White's play from now on. Actually, White's play is really good. Now this just makes real real sense to me because you know you're a rook up in the position. You know, trader queen's absolutely fine. Bringing the king, queen to defend the king is a really good idea. So this is a nice move. And um, another nice move. We're just quite happy to let that pawn go. Doesn't matter. We're a rook up. And black is in serious trouble now, but it's a nice attack by white. It's a nice finish. Look at that move. <laughs> Very, really good. Obviously, uh, black took, but if black doesn't take, because the game goes on, but black falls for it. Should smell a little rat there. And this move is really, really nice. It's a great finish from white. So let's look at another example. So this one is d4 opening. Let's look at black. Right, so even on a d4, d5 move, white looks like going into a London system. And this move, like, it's just not, it's not a move. Uh, it's not a move. Uh, black's just overcomplicating the position. What would I do in this position? No, normal, sensible developing moves, like, you know, e6. I'll bring the knight in, maybe play something like this. Bishop somewhere. Castles, that's it. H5 doesn't do anything to the position. Uh, and it's just not a move. It's all it's unnecessarily complicated. Doesn't really do anything. You're not going to castle kingside. Uh, not really a good move, not necessary. And then this move, again, I wouldn't really take. Give up the bishop to bring the queen into the game. Right, in this position. 94, maybe. Right, uh, even just you can even get away with e six. Six. Yeah, you've got double pawns, but then you're on you're on e four. Right, and then you can maybe do that and maybe say that this move's not terrible. <laughs> so yeah, it's a little, little unnecessarily complicated. Well not unnecessarily necessarily complicated in this position. It's just a case of like taking and just bring in a, a piece into the play for, for white. So white's better position. We haven't really done anything. And this move, you know, I'm shocking my head again. Like, obviously, this knight's not developed. This pawn needs moving to get the bishop out. Just moving the knight for no reason at that I can think of at all. So it doesn't make sense. It's just making things more complicated than necessary. Like, black player could just play simple moves and just get a miles better opening just by playing normal moves. And then this move, you know, what's wrong with this move? Right, well, it should be checkmate, that's one thing. Uh, it just unnecessarily weakens this diagonal, right? And, and black really should pay for that. But white misses it, and white's opportunity has gone. They should still put the check in to force the king, you know, to d7, but they don't. Again, a little bit like well, no, I don't quite like that as well. Maybe have some sort of stake in the center. I'm not sure I like the position, but carry on anyway. Castles, and then I think this is an issue with not having the pawns in the center. This is a nice move for white. Uh, C4, just hitting the queen, causing trouble. And these pawns really start to move. And fortunately for black, white blunders here with bishop g3, with the piece trapped. So black's now ahead, because white blunders there. Maybe that's what they had in mind with h5 all along, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, takes, takes, and... White pushing those pawns, creating chaos, but it's now black that's ahead because obviously pushing here just sort of just loses this pawn. So I can understand like this looks good on the surface because we've got the rook staring at the queen, but obviously just drops this pawn. So a little, probably a little bit careless play rather than chaotic in this instance. And the rook site doesn't work. I mean, it's a nice idea, but we just have this in position anyway. 
So it's a nice idea. Uh, like, you can understand taking this pawn, but it's a sort of buffer in the position, but you know, it obviously falls foul. And then this is just a blunder. This is a, a pattern, a tactical pattern. And uh, White wins. I'm not going to go into the rest of the game. So basically, uh, just early chaotic moves. Like, just giving themselves problems for no reasons. Obviously, this one being the worst. But just this move early on. It's just doesn't, doesn't do anything to really help Black at all. Just, just makes things complicated. You've got this sort of opening. And, you know, it's not one you can sort of just ramp pawns on. It's a D4, D5 set up. So you sort of have to play it in the spirit of that opening, which is slower, more strategic. So just d6. And then if, if bishop, uh, what would I do? You could take, I don't like the idea of taking. I would just bring it on our knight into the position, perhaps. And then if takes, clamp down. You can argue that these pawns clamp down in the position. So my advice would be for like, you know, intermediate, low intermediate players, don't try and create chaos. Like, cause you can often backfire. You can often win games by creating chaos, but I don't think it's advisable. I think, you know, taking the clarity out of the position, like, like in the first example is best and just make it easier for yourself. Really or make it easier for, for that sort of player. That's what's what I would recommend anyway. So thank you. Goodbye.